Hello and welcome to the first lesson. Well, in the first lesson of this course, I will cover these main three topics. The first one will be what is ETOPS. Here I will explain for you what ETOPS stands for and the related issues. In the second part, I will discuss the basic design procedures. Here, once you understand the basic design procedure, it will be easy for you to design the structural members of any building. The third part will be the introduction to the training. Here I will cover the content of the training, the roadmap that we are going to follow and other related issues. Well, let us go directly to the first part. What is ETAPS? ETAPS is constructed from these main five letters E T A B S. So ETAPS is a software that's created by CSI or Computers and Structures Incorporate. Okay, so E T A B S stands for Extended Three Dimensional Analysis of Building Systems. Here one can easily see and understand that this software is a specialized software in the analysis and design of building systems. So to get its optimum, you better use this software for building systems, not for other structures. So that's why this software is doing well beyond other similar softwares that you may see in the market. Before directly going to the use of the software, a designer must understand the basic design procedures. Without understanding these design procedures, it will be difficult for you to efficiently design any structure. So for this, these design procedures consist of these main four steps. So there will be step one, two, three, and four. So in the first step, there will be functional planning. The second part will be the structural planning. Third one, structural analysis. And the fourth one is the structural design. So let's see them one by one. In the functional planning, it is a kind of saying the architectural design of the building, okay, of the building. So here it consists of coming up with the plan that satisfies the intended purpose. Here you need to consider the client's interest and the code provisions and requirements, okay. Here once you get the client's interest and you know the code provisions and recommendations, the architect must come up with a design that is aesthetically appealing and acceptable. So at this level, the architects are responsible of deciding these following items, but not limited to the function of the areas. So the architect will decide where the bedrooms will be, how many bedrooms are required, the kitchen and its orientation, its location, and so on. The relation and arrangements of these rooms with one another, okay, must be decided by the architect based on his experience and knowledge. And the architect must decide on the dimensions of these rooms in order that it gives the service that it's intended for. And finally, but not the least, okay, the lighting and the ventilation must be ensured so that natural lighting and ventilation must have access or each room must have access to natural, vent uh, natural lighting and natural ventilation. So the architect will do this and other works so that this building will give the intended purpose, will satisfy the intended purpose. So in the second stage of the design procedure, this is a structural planning. In the structural planning, this is basically where the work of the structural engineer starts. So the structural engineer must come up with a structural scheme that includes, but not limited to the following items. These are the, the structural engineer will decide on the column beam layout. Generally, this layout may be given by the architect. However, it may be modified depending on the structural requirements. The other is the slab types, maybe slab uh, preliminary design of the slabs and staircase will be decided at this level. And possible foundation types, okay, maybe isolated, maybe combined, maybe straps, maybe. So the structural designer must plan with the possible foundation types from the early beginning. So for example, the type of foundation that may come up, 
okay maybe if it is not okay like this we may have an assumption that maybe possibly combined footing or other types of footings will be there so the structural engineer will decide at this level these issues but they are not limited to this only in the third part here is where the main game of the structural engineer starts this is the structural analysis so in the structural analysis we have two main issues that we have to deal with the first issue is determining the loads the second part will be modeling those loads and the structure itself using uh, the appropriate software and analyzing it here the loads are generally categorized into two these are the vertical or the gravitational loads and there will be lateral loads in the horizontal direction so the vertical loads are basically of two types the dead load that will be calculated using the densities or the unit weights of the materials generally this material unit weights are given in the code so you have to refer to the code and you have to take these unit weights and calculate the dead loads on the structure the self weight of the structural members the column the beam the slabs staircase all this will be automatically calculated by the software itself on the other hand there will be live load it's a part of, of the gravitational loads that is a, it is a downward load these live loads are calculated from the code again depending on the function of the loaded areas okay so it's easy to just go to the code and take the, the live loads from the code as per the function of that area now a sample of the code is like this for example category a this is areas for domestic and residential activities here rooms in residential buildings and houses and so on so bedrooms in hotels kitchens and toilets these are all under category a so for category a you have another table you go there and you take the live load value from that table so this is how we will deal with the live loads the dead loads you have to go to again the code and take the unit weights multiplied by the dimension the appropriate dimension of the element and calculate the dead load of that structural uh, part or that specific material so the direction of the dead load will be like this as you can see it here so the dead load and the live load will act downward to the center of the gravity okay to the center of the earth okay so this will be a downward vertical loads okay on the other hand there will be lateral loads these lateral loads generally come from wind loads and seismic loads here in the vertical loads maybe snow load can come depending on the country where there's snow where the snow issue is critical so at those locations you have to consider the vertical load or the downward load of the ice from the ice loads okay now the lateral loads is generally from wind and from seismic loads so this is the earthquake load the seismic load is the earthquake load and wind load comes from the wind so they are generally lateral they are horizontal so it causes such kind of lateral deflection or lateral translation of the structure so the structural engineer must design these vertical members the columns and walls so that the overall stability of the structure is satisfied here once you finish the first part that is determining the loads these loads and the structure itself must be modeled so that we obtain the internal forces and the desired deflections and maybe stress okay these calculations of the analysis part okay is generally accomplished by using design softwares you may use one of these softwares generally etabs sap style pro and also other softwares are also available at the market now it helps according to so many references on the internet you see that it helps is now the leading software in the analysis and design of building systems so this is the option number one for me and for so many structural engineers okay so that's why i am focusing on giving this tutorial on it helps for building analysis and design now in the fourth stage in the fourth stage of the design procedure here comes the final part that is the structural design here the structural engineer must come up with the final design sections okay proportioning of the structural members 
with appropriate margin of safeties. So here, the structure that you provide, the dimensions of the sections, the thickness of the slabs, the uh, number of bars or the area of reinforcement required at in, in, in every section or in every structural member, column, beam, slab, staircase, at this level, these all calculations will be accomplished in the last or in the fourth part. Once this part is finished, okay, these are still numbers, okay? These numbers must be converted into drawings and texts and numbers. That's called the final detail drawing, okay? The final detail drawing. So this can be in the form of these drawings, okay? Here you may have a column, the reinforcement here, the number of bar, the length of the bar. Here a beam section, uh, here says support section, number of bars at the top, at the bottom, and uh, uh, torsional, uh, longitudinal bars, and so on, okay? here the beam here uh, combined footing and so on so all the four stage calculations will end up in providing this detailing okay the final detail drawing or the final design drawings okay so this will be the result of the four steps that we have been discussing up to now in the third part of this lesson i will introduce you to the training here in the first level of this training the eight house for building analysis and design we will deal with a custom G plus one residential building that you see it on the screen here. We will design this building. As we said, this is the first stage of the design procedure, okay? This is the first stage of the design procedure. Here we have a functional plan, that's the architectural design of the building. This building will go through etapes and the structural part will be as follows. We will do the modeling this is the representation of the building that was here. The column, the beam layout, and everything, the slab, the staircase, everything will be created inside this software. Then we will analyze this model, and we will find, we will calculate the stretches, the bending moments, the axial forces, the shear forces, and so on, and everything, okay? Now, once we analyze the deflections also, once we analyze the structural components, then we will go to the design of these structural members, the sections that we have provided, whether it is safe or not. So we come up with the final sections and reinforcements that gives us adequate margin of safeties. So these are the main three parts that we will do inside, inside the ETABS software. Now, you have to clearly understand that the best model is the one that can represent and resembles the actual structure. So if this structure is somewhat different from this one, it means the result that you are going to obtain from the structural analysis and design will be something different and it will not represent your structural, your actual architectural design. So these structural models must resemble and be the same, the same as much as possible to the architectural design that is already at hand. So that will give you the best model and it will result in the most accurate design results. Now, let us come to the roadmap that we are going to follow. All you can say the content of the training. Here I will introduce you to the ETAP interface at the initial. Then we will go through these main nine topics. That is, we will define the grid data, then define the material, then the structural sections, then we will create the 3D model, then we will define the loads and load combinations, then we will assign it on the building, then we will analyze the frame, then design the frame, then we will analyze the shell element, basically the slab, and then we will design the slab on the software. Now, this is the main roadmap that we are going to follow. At the end of this training, every one of you will have the, the capacity and the knowledge to deal with analyzing and designing buildings using ETAP software. In addition to this, I will provide you with tips that will help you in using the ETAP software. So you have to manage errors and warnings that may pop up when you are analyzing and designing your building systems, export to Excel and reporting uh, tasks, okay? And creating shortcuts because it will simplify and make easy your works uh, in the long term and changing colors, fonts as you wish and rendering models and creating image of your model. All this will be covered in this level, level one of ETAPS for building analysis and design. 
Another issue that I need to tell you is that in this label, I will consider two vertical loads and one lateral load. So the vertical load will be the dead load and the live load. And the lateral load, I will consider here the wind load. The seismic load will come in the second level of this series of training. Now, the dead load will be calculated from uh, the floor finish densities and unit weights and the ceilings and mortars and so on. And maybe from loads from the partitions or walls. The self-weight of the structural members, this will be generally done by the software itself. And the live load will be taken from the code as per the function of the areas. And wind load will be also as per the code requirement. This training will follow generally the Euro code. However, any person having a different code or any person from a different country that do not follow the Euro code can also follow this training because the general design procedure is almost the same. Maybe the values will be different from country to country. So you can refer your own code while following this training. Saying this, I can't wait to see you in the next lesson. Please let us meet in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. See you next time.